Hi, I'm Joe Martin. I'm your 37th Vice Chief of Staff of the Army, and today I've got the honor and the privilege of having a discussion with Ms. Carla Wiggins. Carla is a 17-year veteran of our Department of the Army civilian workforce, and she's worked in our health care line of effort for those 17 years. Currently, she's a personal operational specialist at Wynn Army Community Hospital at Fort Stewart, Georgia. She's a mother, she's a spouse, and she's the survivor of her daughter, Alyssa, who passed in October 2015. She also chose to live instead of dying. Today we're going to talk about a public health problem that's Goliath. It's suicide. It's devastating. It's devastating to the families it impacts. It's devastating to the communities that it impacts. It's devastating to the units it impacts. It's devastating for everybody. And it's a problem that we've got to continue to work on tackling. Seeking help is a sign of strength. And Carla's story is going to talk about the importance of that and what impact it had on her. She's got a compelling testimony. So, Carla, I'd like to start by saying thanks for coming. Thank you, sir. And uh, please, share with us your story. So as a, as a Department of Army civilian, we get to sit through our ACE training every year. And so I remember in the summer of 2015, sitting in the back of the auditorium, doing the ACE training, thinking about the things I needed to do at work, thinking about the things that we tend to think about, right, which is, you know, they're talking to a group of people that's not me. This is not ever going to be anything that I'm going to have to deal with. This happens to, this happens to somebody else. This happens to a, a certain type of family or a certain type of person. And, and, and so I just, I mean, you know, we listen and we get to check our box. And, um, and of course, I had known people that had died by suicide, but it was always well removed from my, you know, your inner circle, your immediate family, friends. And in October of 2015, I realized that all those things that I had thought for so many years about who uh, is affected by suicide, who is affected by depression is, is, is not in actuality. That's not the reality. Uh, because in October of 2015, my 20 year old daughter took her own life by suicide. And I, I realized then that you know, from the outside and even from inside our family unit, um, we're just a, we were just a normal family with normal struggles. And I realized that, that it can happen to you. It can happen to me. It can happen to anybody. And we shouldn't think that it's always going to happen to somebody else. And then after losing her, fast forwarding really then with my own struggles and what that means as a parent to try to figure out how you're supposed to live without your child who you're supposed to protect and and you know the things that we should have or that I should have done different could have done different um, and then really just f for me what what I always thought of meant what I always thought of suicide how that meant right um, and then once I had my own struggle, just once I realized, honestly, that, and I got that low, and I understood how low you have to be to make the decision to end your life because I got there. And then I realized that, um, that in that moment, after I had chosen to take my life, and then I made a different decision and I decided to, to live, and that deciding to live was actually much more difficult for me in that moment um, than the decision that I had just made over the previous few weeks to die. So it, it really just compelled me to want to make sure that, that people know that it can happen to you, it can happen in your family, and it doesn't make you weak to ask for help because I then knew how strong I was going to have to be to try to live. So that's powerful. You took the harder decision to live over the easier decision to end your life. What was, what, what was, what was the one thing that tipped you in that direction to, to make that decision? 
honestly, the, the, the thing that, that tipped me to make that decision was having this fleeting memory and it was a memory just six months from six months previous where as the mom, I stood in the back of the, the funeral home looking at my daughter in a casket and I could hear and see, you know, not just myself and her brothers, but our family and our friends and what that was doing to them, right? The utter devastation. There, there really isn't any words to describe. I always use the word devastation because I just don't know any other word that completely comes close to describing how it feels. And I knew in that moment, even though I had already sent the text to say, this is where I've hidden my key and this is what's getting ready to happen, that I wasn't expecting anyone to answer. I knew in that moment that the decision I was going to make was going to cause the people that cared about me and loved me to be in the same spot that I had been in six months before. So even though I didn't know how I was gonna find the strength to live, I knew that I was going to somehow have to dig really, really deep and ask for help and not be afraid to ask for help and, and find that strength. I, I gotta tell you, that, that's, it's an incredible message. And the, 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 you look to the future and you said, I don't want to do mm -hmm. what I saw done to me as a result of your daughter's decision. I don't want my family to go through that. I'd look at it a different way. I'd think about from day one till the day we're talking right now, all the things that you've done for your family, for your spouse, for your children, for army communities, for the workforce that you belong to? What would this world have been like without you? We'll never know because you're here. But you, cho you chose, you made that decision because you did not want to hurt your family, put them through that. Yet you didn't even consider that Look at all that I can give to this world and what you've done. And it's amazing. And it's not over. It <laughs> continues. And so thank you for making that decision. Because the world would, would have been a different place had you decided otherwise. And I know that wasn't what was going through your mind. No. And I can't imagine how hard it was. But we talk about seeking help. And you reached out to a friend and you said that was the toughest part. You said, I need help. What happened from there? So my director, so the friend that I had reached out to was in the States and I was in Germany. And so my director told, they talked to me through the night, texting, um, made sure I was okay. I did finally fall asleep for a little bit. She told me, she said, I want you to be at the office at this time. Don't care how you look. Cause I was, I, I was a mess by then. Um, wasn't taking care of myself, wasn't taking care of my house. I just was not really functioning. And she said, I want you to meet me at the office at this time. She didn't even make me, I snuck in a back door, went straight to her office. She walked me out and she walked me in to behavioral health. And that was the beginning of me learning that it's okay if I reach out for help. It is okay if I my friends really do want to know and my family really does want to know if I have a day that I'm struggling. It is okay if I tell them that I'm having a day that I'm struggling. Because even now, six years later, having this conversation with you and knowing all that I have done and been able to do and the dozens of people that I've talked to doesn't mean that I still don't have bad days. I still have bad days. And it doesn't make me weak that I still have bad days. And, and so I really have had to learn and know that I can talk to you today and we can, I can have a, I can meet with a group of service members and their families, but it doesn't mean that in two weeks I am not going to have to ask a friend, hey, I'm really having a bad day. Can you just come sit with me for a minute? And not to, I just don't feel ashamed about that anymore, that it's okay. You know, Carl, everybody's story is different there's different signs of struggling. And once again, you don't know someone has a problem and they may not know they have a problem if they're not willing to communicate with each other. But you know, 
People have relationship problems. People have financial hardships. People are less than connected. They might feel like they're a burden on somebody else or they don't belong to the group of people they're with. All these can lead in the end to hopelessness. And when there's hopelessness, that can lead to, to less than desirable results. And the key is to make sure that everybody is connected. Connectedness is really important in the Army. And that's why we got programs like This Is My Squad. That's why we've got engaged leadership is something that we're training in our schools. It's something that we're emphasizing so leadership at Echelon with our resiliency councils across the Army. And we're continuing to work on not only building cohesive teams at the squad level where soldier, squad leader, fellow soldiers and families are connected together and they build relationships based on trust, mutual respect and empathy so they can build this cohesive team and it's surrounded by an ecosystem of things that enable this cohesive team to do well. Because we've moved beyond intervention. Intervention and response is really important. We've got to understand how to respond when someone is, is entering crisis. But we're trying to move upstream of that with our prevention efforts. And that's what building cohesive teams is all about and creating these ecosystems that surround these cohesive teams so that they can thrive as cohesive teams. We ask our leaders, do you care? And if the answer to that is yes, then do you know how to care? And we're not assuming that they do. And it's not because that they're not great people. It's just that it's not easy to learn how to care. It's not easy to understand the resources that you need to reach out to when you've exceeded your ability to help solve a problem. Like your friend saying, I can, I can help you by getting you to some help. That's still helping. It's okay, but that requires resource education. It requires a continued effort in educating our leaders on the difference between prevention and intervention and response. But that's the direction we're going, Carla. And I would like to ask you at this point, what have you learned from all your experiences helping our soldiers and their families across the Army, uh, moving, continuing to live beyond that decision that you made, thank goodness, on the day that you made it? What have you learned? So I, act, I actually love that you talked about care um, because one of the things that I've learned is that more people struggle than what we even can imagine, right? And maybe it's not the, the you know, maybe it's not the life or death decision that they're making, but, but the struggle enough that, that it could get there um, and, and, and if it's not them, it could be their family member, it could be a child, and they just don't feel like they have anyone to talk to. Talk to. I have learned that we are so busy. Life is so busy. Work is busy. Homes are busy. It is just very, very busy. And I think sometimes we forget to just stop and be kind. So when you talk about care, like caring about people, but you have to show that person that you care about them because I can tell you that I care about something or someone, but if I don't show that someone that I care about them, then me saying that I care isn't what they need. And, and I think I, I, we talk about touch points or count, you know, counseling, I, I talk about touch points and, and meeting with people, sit down with them, make it not always be about a work thing or a, or something, just, just make sure that you get to know them as much as they're willing to let you know them so that you do notice a change in their behavior, a change in the way they act, a change in the way their work product is. Um, but you have to let them see that you genuinely care about them and their well-being and so I really think at the core of what I've learned is is that we are so busy that that we are forgetting how to truly just be kind to each other and to genuinely care about another person because they're another person and and because they have something to give to this world as well and and we want them to be their best self 
And, and so I, I really think that it, I've talked to dozens and other than the things that we've already talked about, right? Like the stigma is still there. We keep trying to break down those walls and I know Army is doing such a great job. We're trying to break down those walls, but there's still a stigma. They still feel like they're going to be considered weak or shunned if they reach out for help. And so we just have to keep kind of knocking down those barriers. But I just think at the core of it is we just need to take take a few minutes and show people that we genuinely, genuinely care about them. Thanks for sharing that, Carla. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I've learned uh, over the past several years being the vice chief of staff. Uh, our goal's got to be zero. Mm -hmm. And when you think about an army as large as it is, zero is a daunting number uh, given the, the, the large number of tragedies we've had over the past several years. Um, there's not one solution, but is it possible that there's a unit out there, the squad that says, not my squad, this is, not, this, is not, this is our squad. This is not gonna happen in our squad. And they can show other squads how they're able to do that. And those other squads are able to realize that that's a goal for them. Well, you put three of those squads together, now you've got a platoon that says, our goal is zero. And there's three platoons in a company that share good ideas. And the next thing you know, you got three platoons, which make a company. Now you get a company that says our goal is zero. We can achieve it, but it's daunting. But we've got to start somewhere. And I can tell you, the place we start is with our squads. We've got to have some hard discussions to find ways to prevent crisis. We've got to get left of crisis so that people can understand that, once again, getting beyond the stigma, it's okay to say, I don't know how to do this. My car broke down and I don't know how to go get it fixed, where to go. I can help you with that. I'm having problems with my marriage. I can't help you with that, but when I had a problem with that, I went to a chaplain and the chaplain helped me with that. I didn't know that. Problem on a path to being resolved before a crisis happens. It's okay to have problems. It's okay to seek help. Seek help does not always mean that you, that you have to go to the highest, most, uh, the highest level of help. Sometimes help is standing right next to you. You just gotta talk about it. It's difficult. But we've gotta continue to uh, equip our leaders and our command teams with several tools. We've gotta educate them and understand, educate them to understand the signs of someone that's struggling in a simple way or someone that's struggling greatly. We've got to educate them on how to connect with other people and the importance of it. In this day and age, with our reliance on uh, personal electronic devices, social media, and other forms of communication like that, uh, personal connectedness has taken on a new, uh, a, a new life of its own. But the power of personal interaction, I think you would agree, is very, very high and it's getting people to understand how valuable that can be. We've got to teach people about the awareness, or make them aware of the resources that are available. There's a ton of resources that are available. We're doing a chain teach in the United States Army right now, teaching people, this is our doctrine, and here's the resources, and here's your responsibilities associated with these resources so that you can bring to bear with the soldiers in your formation. And then all the prevention initiatives. What I've learned probably that most recently is there are some, some, some common themes as it pertains to adversity that are universal no matter where you're signed in the United States Army. But there are places where adversity is different in some regards. There's nuances based on the environment where so, some of our soldiers are assigned. So there are solutions that may not work in one place, but will work in another. And so it's not something that we can wave a magic wand and it'll be fixed across the Army. Commanders have got to understand that it's different at every location where we serve. And each soldier, each family member, they're all individuals. They are unique in many regards. And understanding that what may not be a problem for me, could be a problem for someone else. And having the empathy to say, that's okay. 
I wouldn't have that problem, but you do. But you know what? I'm going to help. I'm going to help you fix that problem. That's what we've got to do, and that's what we'll continue to work on. I'm going to ask you to think about some things. This is a community issue, and it's a community problem, and it's a wicked problem. And hopefully today's discussion allows you to better understand that. I'd ask that you know your soldiers, know your teammates. If you're a civilian, know your fellow civilians. Be the person that they can trust. Educate yourself on the resources that are available, but equally important to that, understand the threshold where you're about to exceed your personal ability to help someone that's seeking help through you and build a trusting relationship so that they'll trust you to take them to that place that they can receive help. It's not easy to do. You've got to work at it every day. Tell your soldiers and civilians every day that they matter, that your organization tomorrow would not be as good as it is today without them, and that you cannot accomplish the mission without them and that they belong to your tribe and they are never a burden to your team, regardless of the problem that they're trying to solve or the problem that you're helping them solve. Because it's okay to seek help. Every single life is worth living. Army strong.